Okay, let's go ahead and calculate the surface area of this box. That's what we're going to be doing in this video. Now, if you think you can uh, do this, I uh, definitely encourage you to pause the video and uh, calculate the surface area of this particular rectangular box and put your answer in the comment section. We'll see how well you do with this. It's, uh, this is not going to be that difficult of a problem, but really what I want to uh, talk about here is to make sure we understand the distinction between area surface area and volume. Okay, so we'll do a quick uh, review of uh, these three concepts and we're really talking about basic geometry here. So you definitely, you know, uh, want to know how to calculate the surface area of things like this box. So this is not that difficult of a problem, but uh, again, if you're not quite sure what to do, just stick with me for a couple minutes and you'll be an expert at finding the surface area. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But uh, if you're having a tough time in math, maybe you just don't feel like you're good in math. I can just tell you right now, that is not true. Okay, Anyone can be very, very good at math, but you definitely need the right, uh, the right kind of instruction. So if you don't feel like you're getting enough instruction in your current math course, and maybe you're not connecting with your teachers uh, teaching style, whatever the case might be. I've been teaching math for decades and I really break things down in a clear and understandable way so everyone can be successful in mathematics. So if you're at the middle school, high school, even college level in terms of mathematics, I can help you succeed in your math courses. Now, if you're preparing for any kind of uh, test or exam that has a math section on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, AccuPlacer, ALEX exam, CLEP exam, teacher certification exam, you get the idea. I can help you prepare and pass uh, those particular exams. If you homeschool, you absolutely must check out my homeschool math program and curriculum. And if you need some uh, math notes, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. But if you want to have great grades in math, you have to have great math notes. you got to put the work in every day to make your notes uh, just as awesome as they can be. And believe me when I tell you, your grade will start improving if you start improving your notes. Okay, so let's get into the surface area of this box. And um, we do want to make the distinction between area, surface area, and volume. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this rectangular box right here. So let's just talk about area uh, real quick. Okay, so area, if I had like the area of a rectangle, uh, area is really like a, a two-dimensional kind of concept. Okay, this is just how much you know, material, for example, you know, what I need to cover this uh, two-dimensional uh, shape, okay? This is the concept of area. So we can find the area of a uh, level rectangle, for example, okay? We could break it up in here, just count. Let's say this is, uh, these are one foot boxes. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we would have eight feet squared, for example, in this particular example. Now, we could have also find the area of a circle, okay? Again, we're talking about a two-dimensional kind of um, uh, uh, figure or representation of something, okay? So that's area. Now, surface area, on the other hand, okay, surface area, what we're talking about is going to be a three-dimensional kind of situation. That's what we have here, okay? So how can we think about the surface area? Well, a good way to think about this is, let's say this little box right here with something you're going to wrap. Okay, let's say it's going to be a gift. Yeah, that's a good way to uh, think about it. You say, hey, I'm going to give someone a birthday gift or whatever the case is. How much wrapping paper would you need to wrap this uh, gift, this rectangular box? Well, let's just take a look at this. Well, you're going to need to have enough paper to cover the ends. Okay, these are the ends right here. And then we're going to have to have some uh, enough paper to cover the tops and bottoms. And then we need the sides right here. Okay. So if you look at this, this is really these uh, ends, for example, are little rectangles in and of themselves. Okay. So this is like an area problem, an area problem. We have an, all these little uh, area problems of the sides and ends of this uh, box. Okay. And essentially that's what surface area is, is just adding up the entire area that covers this figure. Okay. So for example, let's take this another step further, just so you have a distinction. If I had a cylinder, for example, okay, 
the surface area, let me just draw this a little bit like this, would be the area of the two ends, okay, which would be the area of the, that's those circles, okay, right here and here. And then we would have to find the area all around uh, the sides of this little like cylinder, okay? So that's surface area. Now we're not gonna do the surface area of a cylinder. Those, for, uh, those are kind of additional uh, videos, but let me just kind of erase all of this. I just want uh, you to make sure you have a good uh, uh, distinction between surface area and volumes. All right, so let's talk about one other thing here. So surface area is like the um, amount of um, coverage we need to, like, say, wrap this as a gift, okay? Now, volume, on the other hand, all right, is what? Well, that's like if we open up the top of this box and we started filling this thing up with water. We're like, okay, we're going to fill this... Um, this little uh, box here, I didn't want to use that color, I want to use blue to represent water. So I want to fill this whole box up and calculate how much water you know, I can fill up to the very, very top of this thing. That's volume, okay, that is volume. All right, now, one thing that we want to um, be clear about is the units of measure, okay? Now, I'm not going to tell you what these little units of measure are. I'm, of course, I'm going to tell you here in a second, but I want uh, you to give, you know, to see if you can figure this out. Uh, area and surface area, because this is a type of area, will always be in uh, units of measure squared. So if we're measuring things in feet, area and surface area would be feet cubed. And uh, volume is always units of measure cubed. So if this was in feet, for example, our volume would, could be in something like feet uh, cubed. All right, this is feet squared. I'm sorry, I don't know if I uh, misstated that. But again, surface area and area is... Uh, Units of measure squared, I think I said cubed, uh, whatever the case is, I'm clearing that up right now. And volume will be units of measure cubed. And that's very, very important because if we don't put in the right uh, units of measure, some math teachers will uh, dock you some points as they should because we are calculating a certain concept and you need to understand the right units of measure. All right, so let me go ahead and just lay this out here for you so you can concentrate because I want to see if you can um, figure this out, okay? Of course, I'm going to show you how to solve this here in just one second. But uh, what do we need to do to find the surface area of this box here, okay? Well, we're going to have to find the area, okay, of the ends, all right? And the area of rectangles and boxes is simply the length times the width, okay? So that's just the area of all these little subcomponents. So you're gonna have to find the area of these ends. Then we have top and the bottom, okay? So there's like the top, there's the bottom, we call these the ends, okay? And then we have what? We have the sides, okay? So you gotta be very careful and look at the dimensions. So this is two inches high, this is three inches wide, and this is six inches long. So go ahead and make the determination of all uh, the dimensions of each one of these little component parts, and then simply add up all these um, parts, and you're going to get the entire surface area. So let's see if you can do that, and how many um, sides or how many pieces of this uh, box do we have here? Well, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to have to do uh, six little separate calculations, add them all up, and you will get the surface area, okay? Now, um, I'm going to give you a chance here to think about this unit of measure because sometimes you're given, uh, you know, little notations and symbols that you need to understand before you, uh, you know, to be able to interpret. You're not going to necessarily be given units of measure like feet or inches and whatnot. You might be given, a, a given they might be given to you, excuse me, in a notation like this. But let's go ahead and answer this right now. Uh, these are inches. So let's say this is, uh, let's use um, three, okay? This would be three feet, one little apostrophe, and this is three inches. So don't confuse feet with inches. We're talking about inches, all right? This is feet. All right, so I've pretty much given you everything you need to know to find the surface area of this box. So go ahead and pause the video if you want to work on it and put your answer in the comment section. But I'm going to get to this solution right now. So if you don't want to see it, uh, keep pausing the video. But let's get into the answer here. So here is our uh, lovely uh, rectangular box. We've got our dimensions, 2 inches, 6 inches, and 3 inches. And let's go ahead and see how we can calculate this. All right, now... 
Let's talk about the top and bottom. Okay, well, the top, you could do this in any number of different ways. You just have to kind of organize uh, all the little pieces of this box and, and find the, the areas of these sides and then add everything up. So the top and bottom would be this part right here. Okay, so these are the tops and bottoms. So what's the dimensions of that? Well, if you look here, this is uh, three inches by six inches. All right, so this is the dimension of the top, which is the same thing as the bottom. So a six by three rectangle, but we have two of them. So I'm gonna multiply the six by three, okay, the area of this right here by two, okay? Because I have two, the top and bottom, so that's gonna be two times six times three. Of course, uh, that's going to be two times 18, which of course is 36, okay? Now I'll, I'll address the units of measure at the end of this thing, but let's go ahead and continue on. And this is a good way to kind of approach this problem. Let's talk about the sides, okay? Now, what are the sides? Well, this would be like the sides right here, okay? So what is the dimensions of the sides? Well, we have to be very careful when we look at this uh, figure. Well, it's gonna be two inches by six inches, okay? So we have two inches here and six uh, inches there. So we're gonna have two, of these sides, so that's gonna be two times two times six. Of course, that's gonna be two times 12, which is 24, all right? So those are our sides. And now let's go ahead and uh, finish this up. I'm gonna be very careful here not to mess up my little figure. And let's go ahead and address the ends. So this would be the ends right here. And what are the dimensions of the ends? Well, it's two, this is three. So this is a two by three little rectangular box. And of course we have two ends, okay? So we have two times two times three, which is two times six, which of course is 12. So we'll add all these little component parts up here of the surface area and we get 72. But remember we're dealing with inches. Uh, so our unit of measure for area or surface area is gonna be inches squared. So this is the answer. Okay, now if you put 72, and you need to put 72 inches squared, well, you know, I'll give you a 90%. But if you got 72 inches squared, well, then I must go ahead and give you an awesome 1982 little mohawk. Actually, the mohawks are better uh, longer than that. Let me go ahead and really give you a nice looking mohawk. You know, matter of fact, let's put some colors into it because really that's how they used to do it back in the good old days. And it was a lot of work. I didn't wear a mohawk. That wasn't my thing. But a lot of people did. And, you know, a lot of people thought they were pretty cool. But anyways, there's your little mohawk. 100% and A-plus. Nice job. Okay. Now, we are talking about basic geometry concepts. Now, if you didn't get this right, don't worry about it. Okay. If, as long as you learn something, that's the whole point of this video. So I'd rather you, you know, make mistakes with me, not uh, on your actual quizzes and tests. But the whole bottom line is this. Surface area, uh, area, volume, all this kind of basic geometry stuff you're going to see in your math courses and on all these uh, tests that I've mentioned. Uh, so this is stuff that you need to know. Okay, I mean, hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that is the case, go ahead and consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have over 1,000 plus math videos, basic math to uh, advanced math like calculus and everything in between. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of all the content that I have. I have a huge amount of content, all different sorts of subjects. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.